And well, today's video will be short, but in my opinion, it will be worth it. So stay with me. No. It happens that a couple of weeks ago when I was testing the 7800X 3D, actually my brother was testing it uh, to make this video that I are seeing right now on the screen of the 5700X 3D versus 5800X 3D versus 7800X 3D. It happens that when he was testing Microsoft Flight Simulator, the 7800X 3D was barely getting the FPS numbers that I have with my 7700X with the same exact RAM configuration. And we thought to ourselves, well, that's impossible. I mean, it's a 7800X 3D and we are still on a CPU bottleneck scenario on both cases. So we searched and searched and searched. We tried other drivers, uh, he, updated the, he updated the BIOS and so on and nothing fixed it. But as soon as I went and tested some more games on the 7800X 3D, uh, I actually went to BIOS to see if everything was okay and I found that virtualization was on. And as soon as I disabled virtualization, the FPS just shot through the roof from the usual 160 to over 200 FPS, which is actually the usual number for the 7800X 3D. And from that moment on, I immediately knew what was the issue and is called Core Isolation. According to Microsoft, Core Isolation is a security features available on your device that use virtualization-based security. And then we have the memory integrity, which prevents attacks from inserting malicious code into high security processes. And this seems setting the memory integrity inside the Core Isolation is what was making the 7800X 3D perform much, much worse than it should. Usually Windows will enable the Core Isolation and memory integrity by default, meaning that by default, when you enable on when, or when you install Windows, memory integrity will be enabled and sadly, it will reduce your FPS in CPU-driven scenarios. And all you have to do to avoid this is go to BIOS and disable virtualization. But then you might say, well, but I need virtualization. I use lots of emulation, for example, that uses virtualization. I use virtual boxes to run Linux, Windows, or even Mac inside another system and so on. So I need virtualization. So what can I do? All you have to do is go to Windows search bar and search for core isolation go to the menu and disable the memory integrity option. After that, just reboot your system and you're good to go. You have still virtualization, but you don't have the FPS decrease technology called memory integrity. Oh and yeah, I know this is due to security reasons, but honestly, I couldn't care less. I just want my FPS to not be crap. So if I can get way more FPS disabling the memory integrity, especially a thing that I didn't ask for, yeah, I'll just do it without blinking an eye. The same way I'll show you today's sponsor without blinking an eye. Have you ever wanted to upgrade to a larger disk but didn't want to lose your Windows installation and programs? Just use Isis Disk Copy. Isis Disk Copy allows you to create clones of any partition or disk, making you able to move your operating system and files without the hassle of reinstalling everything from scratch. Oh my! And it even allows you to create bootable disks for your Windows or Linux installations, for example. And this, with a simple interface allowing new users to easily use it with one eye shut. Lay an eye on Isis website, where you can get the Isis Disk Copy for free and later upgrade to the Pro version according to your needs. And now you can say, well, but he's just saying that he has more FPS. How can he prove it? And what about other systems like, let's say, the 7700X, the 7600X? How can I know if, in my scenario, the difference will be more or less? Well, don't worry. Let's go into the benchmarks and let's start with my 7700X with the 7900XT. Let's see how it goes. Starting with Assetto Corsa, we can immediately see the differences even with a CPU as fast as the 7700X, with core isolation off being 7% faster at 1080p, but most importantly 21% faster in the 1% lows. Difference that just gets shorter at 1440p as the load goes more to the GPU side. Microsoft Flight Simulator is another title where the difference is just big, being at 1080p or 1440p. At 1080p, we see the core isolation off being 13% faster in the averages and 17% faster in the 1% lows. At 1440p, things don't change much as we are CPU bottlenecked in both situations, but still, free performance. Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden is a way heavier game than most people think, especially in the village parts where the CPUs really suffer. 
In here, the 7700X difference was minimal when using core isolation on or off, with core isolation off delivering around 2 FPS more overall, but still nothing really relevant in this game. As we move to Dragon's Dogma 2, well, this game is quite broken in terms of CPU performance, and somehow I got even less performance with core isolation off, but since this is a gameplay benchmark I believe some things might affect the FPS generally, like the time of the day and so on, so take it with a grain of salt. Starfield is another CPU heavy title, and yet we get our results inside the margin of error, with core isolation on versus off being virtually on par. I thought Starfield would show some more interesting results here, well, but I guess I was wrong. As for Spider-Man, the difference is small, but it is there, mostly at 1080p where core isolation is 5% faster, which is nothing big for sure, but I mean, all the performance that comes for free is very welcomed, at least for me. Enabling ray tracing shifts the load to the GPU a bit more, and the difference gets quite smaller now, with the core isolation off being barely faster, Still, better safe than sorry, I guess, so my my advice is to keep it off, yeah. The Last of Us is one of those titles that really needs a strong CPU to perform well, and interestingly, the difference is almost none, even at 1080p, where we have just only a bit higher 1% lows and even less average FPS, which doesn't really make much sense, but still inside the margin of error. This leads me to believe that a slower CPU would maybe see a bigger difference here. Far Cry 6 shows us basically the same results, where the core isolation off simply delivered a bit higher FPS, but something that wouldn't be noticeable in real gameplay scenarios, especially since it seems that anything below the 150 FPS mark will get the same values with or without core isolation. As for the overall results, the differences are quite small, and that happens because even though some games show a big difference like Assetto Corsa or Flight Simulator, others show a difference of exactly zero, decreasing the overall difference, obviously. Still, pretty decent results for both configurations. And of course, if you want to play games like Assetto Corsa or Microsoft Flight Simulator, core isolation off is a must. And well, as you saw, the difference overall wasn't that much because, of course, in some scenarios we didn't have any difference at all, so the overall difference will be shortened. But still, in terms of games like Assetto Corsa, Microsoft Flight Simulator, the difference is there and will definitely make a difference in gameplay scenarios, especially for people running high refresh rate panels. But once again, I just wanted to go even further. And what about if I had a slower CPU, a slower Intel CPU, paired with an NVIDIA GPU, and since NVIDIA GPUs are known to have a higher CPU overhead from drivers, meaning that slower CPUs will suffer more with the NVIDIA GPUs because, once again, of the higher CPU overhead in the drivers, what will happen if I test core isolation off and on with the 12600K and the RTX 4070 Ti Super? Let's see. And now with a more or less equivalent NVIDIA GPU that once again are known to have higher CPU overhead from their drivers, with a slower CPU from Intel, in this case the 12600K, and please refrain yourself from commenting, from commenting, I'm even stuttering, commenting crap like, you could have used a better Intel CPU, yes, I could, but this is the fastest Intel CPU that I have as of now. I will get maybe a better one soon for more CPU benchmarks. Now, as for the results we can see, as we did with the 7700X, that Assetto Corsa, well, in the Assetto Corsa the CPU suffers with core isolation enabled, with core isolation off being 10% faster at 1080p, and with core isolation on strangely delivering more FPS at 1440p. And that happens since at 1440p the load shifts more to the GPU side, and in some cases it makes a slight difference. With Microsoft Flight Simulator, things get even worse, with core isolation handicapping the performance by 14% at 1080p and 19% at 1440p. And once again, you may ask, why do we have a bigger difference at 1440p since 1440p uses more the GPU? Well, first of all, I would say that the results are almost inside the margin of error, and having those, bo those variances on both end, on the core isolation off and off, makes the difference grow, if you know what I mean. Banisher's Ghost of New Eden had almost no difference with a CPU as fast as the 7700X with the 7900XT. 
But as soon as we use the slower 12600K paired with an NVIDIA GPU, in this case the RTX 4070 Ti Super, the difference gets noticeable at 1080p, with core isolation off being 11% faster, which is a very good improvement for free. And Dragon's Dogma 2 had some funny results with the 7700X as well, but with this combo we can indeed see some difference performance-wise, with core isolation off being 7% faster at 1080p and 4% faster at 1440p, which once again shows us that the core isolation needs to be turned off, especially if you have a slower CPU. Starfield was a game that made no difference with the 7700X and 7900XT combo, and it seems that even with this one the differences are quite small with both settings delivering the same average FPS, but with the 1% lows being higher with core isolation off. And the closer the 1% lows are to the average FPS, the smoother the gameplay is. So that's a very nice thing. And Spider-Man is a game that we know that is very CPU dependent, so I was expecting bigger differences, something that didn't happen, as core isolation off was barely faster at 1080p, and that was it in this case by 6%. And as we enable ray tracing, those differences just disappear as the results are basically within the margin of error. As for The Last of Us, it is more of the same as we didn't see any differences with the previous AMD combo, but now we do. Still, it is more or less like Spider-Man where the biggest difference is really at 1080p and isn't actually that big, in this case 6% as well. As we move to Far Cry 6, we finally see some relevant differences once again, with the core isolation off being 11% faster at 1080p and 10% faster at 1440p. And while these results might not be that relevant, well, or that might not seem that relevant, they are. We're talking about a 10% performance loss because of a setting that was introduced without most people knowing, but these are just my two cents, of course. And finishing with the averages, we can see that the differences are bigger with this combo, as they should, with core isolation off now being 7.4% faster at 1080p and 4.1% faster at 1440p. And remember that some games made no difference so the average is lower, because if you're playing a game like Assetto Corsa or Microsoft Flight Simulator, you definitely want to keep core isolation off, or simply disable virtualization on BIOS, that's also a thing, because it will disable virtualization but it will also disable automatically the core isolation. So it's a you thing I guess. Let's now move to the final thoughts. And well guys, that's all for this video, I guess. Thank you very much for watching. As for the differences, well, as you saw, it seems that, <laughs> well, the, the slower the CPU, the more it will be noticed in some game scenarios. For example, in, stronger C in a stronger CPU with an AMD GPU that has less CPU overhead, like the 7700X, 7900XT combo, games like Banishers and so on didn't make any difference with core isolation off and on. But as soon as you get the slower CPU, especially paired with an NVIDIA GPU that has more CPU overhead, the difference will be even more noticeable, as even on Banishers and in some games where the previous AMD combo had no problems, we, we could see that well, core isolation on did in fact decrease the performance of the 12600K and in some scenarios by a lot. Once again, Assetto Corsa, um, Flight Simulator was a big difference, Banishers also had a, a difference at 1080p and some more games had indeed a difference. So in CPU driven scenarios, the core isolation on will definitely, definitely decrease the performance if you have, specially, specially of course, if you have a lower tier CPU. That's what will happen. So my opinion is if you don't use virtualization by any chance, just go to BIOS and disable it. It is the easiest way and when you are installing Windows once again you don't need to care about it because as soon as virtualization is off on your BIOS you won't be even able to access the core isolation menu on Windows meaning that you can't even enable it and it won't be enabled automatically. So the best way to do it is disabling virtualization on BIOS. As in terms of security, I mean if someone really really wants to hack your system it will not be the memory integrity option that will save you so why not have more FPS when you can have more FPS and a smoother gameplay so yeah but, but that's just me of course you do you thank you very much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share this video 
that really helps a lot and leave your comment in the comment section let me know for example your experience and the fps difference that you have if you play for example assetto corsa or microsoft flight simulator let me know the difference in fps that you have when enabling or disabling core isolation i'm really eager to know thank you very much and see you in the next video cheers